Okay, good morning, everyone. So I'll start with a couple of presentations with some updates about my company. Start with a company overview. We are a public listed company on the main board of Busan Malaysia. We established since 1975. We embrace uh, green sustainability uh, in our core operations by adopting 100% natural latex baiting as our core products and by using green energy efficient green technology in our operations. We operate uh, single branded as well as multi branded factory outlet stores in our direct B2C sales channels. Our competitive advantage, we are we are currently the largest natural latex bedding manufacturer in Malaysia. We have a very well diversified sales channels. So it includes we have a rather balance between export as well as domestic sales. And for domestic, we have direct sales, B2C, we have dealers, we have uh, certain TV home shopping. Uh, so we have quite a diverse sales channel, which provide a very strong base for our sales. When one channel is affected by certain a situation whereby other channels more or less they can provide a very good cushion. We have a portfolio of established brands under our, our company and we are in a rather strong net cash position with sustainable dividend policy. Financial highlights, I will talk about details shortly. This is our board of directors. Uh, we have three executive directors and four non-executive directors. Mr. Lee Suiket is the founder and uh, the chairman. Myself, I'm the MD come CFO. Mr. Winston Lee is an uh, executive director. Then uh, we have three, four non-executive directors. Mr. Lee Kong Kui is a uh, deputy chairman. Mr. Richard is our audit committee chairman. He is a charter accountant and he runs his own audit firm. Ms. Yiwong Eng is a woman entrepreneur in ergonomic furniture industries. And Ms. Xiao Yong Yong is a lawyer. She sits in three listed uh, companies. We move on to business overview. We are a niche player focusing on the natural latex. We produce both latex as well as a spring and latex combination. We have two factories in Klang, located in Klang with a total area of 440,000 square feet. Our latex production, we have uh, six production lines. Total employees about 350, and our capacity for our latex operation is about 7,000 tons a year. As at last year, our export and domestic sales composition made up our export 45% and domestic 55%. We export to country including Korea, China, Europe, US, Canada, Japan, Australia, etc. These are our portfolio of brands. NetPure is our key brand. Uh, it, it basically stands for natural and pure. Uh, it's the, currently the largest natural latex bedding in Malaysia. Inglander is, uh, is one of the top 10 American brands with more than 100 years of uh, heritage. It's one of the pioneer in the US, established since 1894. We used to be uh, just a licensee since 2008. But by the time 2015, because with growing importance contribution to our company, we negotiated and managed to acquire uh, the trademark right of this brand for the Southeast Asian countries, the 10 countries. Now we are the, the proud owner of this trademark for Southeast Asia, including Malaysia. Temper is, uh, is the world largest trading company listed on New York Stock Exchange. We are their exclusive distributor. This is targeting at a very high-end, very niche, high-end, and we are just a distributor for Malaysia market. Uh, it, it provides, a, it's a complementary to our operations, and it provides, uh, it, the contribution is less than 5% from our total turnover. But it provides a very complementary contribution to our operations. We run our own showrooms, IBG. We have specialized uh, direct retail showrooms for Napio Gallery, as well as Inglander Boutique. We also run MFO, which stands for Mattress Factory Outlets, which as the name implies is, uh, we have a multi-branded stores with uh, direct factory outlet models, which is getting popular. Stressless is, uh, is one of the leading recliner from Norway. 
uh, we are also their distributor. It's also a small com complementary sales side to our retail operations. At the moment, we have three Malaysian board of records under our belts. Number one is uh, we are the largest natural lab expanding. Number two, we are the first and only one uh, certified our natural latex to be aniline free. In the process of all the latex form manufacturers in the world, they, they need to have a certain compound. Uh, the compound includes the use of certain chemical called aniline. Uh, aniline is, a, is something, it is a chemical which is excessive use of it may be harmful. But most of the manufacturers, of course, they are they stay within the safe line, like it's very safe. But we are the first one, we managed to totally eliminate the use of aniline in the compound. So we got a certification for this with a test certificate from Germany also. Number three, we are the first and only one certified to produce organic latex uh, under this goals called global organic latex system. Just imagine now the, the, the quest for green, it goes beyond food. Now even for bathing, for mattress, uh, certain developed countries, especially like US, Europe, the, the demand for Organic latex is gaining popularity. Uh, just for mattress also, we need organic now. Next, this is uh, our latest green certification. We also certified, well, the, I think the first one also in Malaysia, under Forest Stewardship Council, FSC. This is uh, for sustainability in our sourcing, our operation, as well as our output. We continue to pursue green sustainability in our operations. These are some of the awards we won over the years. This is the uh, an award, not really an award, it's a ranking by Minority Show, this watchdog group. Way back in 2016, they ranked uh, 100 companies based on corporate governance and performance. Uh, we, we were honored to be ranked among the top 100, which is 99 actually. Some operating highlights. We enter into a collaboration with Kuku to launch a, a new product called Kuku Nepure Mattress under this uh, rental business model, which is uh, another new sales channel for us. This collaboration with Kuku is that uh, we will, instead of outright sales, the product will be delivered to the customer on a monthly rental basis. For example, uh, when we first launched, it's for 150 a month rental for three years, which in total about 5,000 over in Kena. So the collaboration is that Kuku will, responsible, will be responsible for all the sales, marketing, commissions, advertisements. And we will be responsible for the uh, manufacturing and logistic and servicing. Uh, servicing the after sales service was provided by Kuku. We provide is a manufacturing service. So the collaboration is that the sharing of the revenue is a co-branded products. The sharing of revenue, Kuku will take about 60% and we take 40%. And uh, for this, this is a, I would say it's a new growth pillar for us because it enables our product because we are targeting at the premium market. Our average selling price for mattress, finished mattress for the pure, those examples is about 5,000, uh, for the average 5,000. For 5,000, that's why I would say majority of our previous existing customers are, are more suddenly more affluent whereby they can afford to pay outright or even by credit cards. But there are a lot of the mass market whereby they want to appreciate good mattress, but they cannot afford to pay outright of 5,000. So with this rental model, it makes our products accessible uh, to this mass market whereby they just pay 150 a month. Uh, 150 a month, they can enjoy a very good mattress. So it opened up uh, this market, which previously is difficult for us to tap. So on the right side is a, it's a summary of the sales by channels. I can see our export in 2020, 2021 is about 41%. And for this year, for this year, our export actually got affected by by the slowdown of uh, demand in US and Europe, uh, partly due to the exceptionally high 
uh, freight costs and also due to the very high inflation experience in those countries. So for this year, actually our export is quite badly affected. But our because with our diverse sales channel, our local domestic sales more than made up for it. They can see our directly to see actually emerge very strong. Just the first half of this year is already 26 million compared to the full year of last year is about 32.8 million. Our wholesale also performed very strong. Uh, and our like cocoon and pure, our half year is equivalent to almost like last year, full year already. So all this is more than made up for the, the drop in our export sales. Next, I'll talk about a bit about our, our acquisition of this Ita House. We enter into a accept purchase agreement to acquire Ita House retail operation in our quest to expand our retail operation to the southern region. Uh, this actually is an untimely acquisition whereby it causes a, it's a bad investment so far. Uh, originally, so we acquired 70% for 4.9 million. But after very soon after that, then we experienced MCO and the company was uh, in a very bad shape. And uh, the vendor actually there's a corporate profit guarantee. Uh, they have a profit guarantee, but of course sometimes we give and take. Uh. So the company has been in a very bad shape. Have been uh, making losses. We have up to last year we have impact uh, combined of total of three point seven million uh, for this data house. As recent as July, finally, we sought out with the vendor. They are willing to relinquish his remaining 30% to us so that we won't pursue further for the corporate guarantee, uh, for the, sorry, for the profit guarantee. Right? So this is the best way so we solve this. If not, it will be a very nasty situation where right? both of us are stuck. We cannot console the account also and uh, the whole operation is got stuck. So now we are in the midst of consolidating the this operation and reviving uh, and we can see that the, the market is slowly recovering and we expect the company to, to turn around for the second half of this year. Financial highlights. These are revenues for the past five years plus a half year of 2020. For financial year end 2017 to 2018, we experienced a very healthy growth from 74.9 million to 100 million. At that time, we expanded our capacity. So we have a very good expansion. And we have very high hope of further expansion by 2019. But 2019, uh, 2019 we were affected by the trade wars between China and US, which affected some of our export customers actually got affected also. Then we hope for again for 2020 to have a very good result. But again, 2020, we were affected by COVID, the MCO1. MCO1 affected our operation for both export as well as local. So our sales dropped a bit. 2021, we regained back, even though we were plagued by the EMCO, EMCO in 2021, which like for the local operation actually affected two to three months for the third quarter, two to three months. So, but we still managed to have record turnover for 104 million. For this year, half, first half of this year, we already uh, increased our total turnover by 17% compared to last year. So this year, we expect to have another record turnover. Despite the, the softening of the export market, but we, we expect to have a record turnover for this year. These are uh, some of the key uh, profitability figures. Our PBT, we, so far we picked at 2018, 19 and 20, we got affected by the trade wars as well as the COVID 2020. 2021, actually we have a record PBT, but we have we, we took a 2.7 million in payment for the house investment. We took 1 million in 2020 impairment and 2021, 2.7 million. So without the impairment, we actually 2021, our PBT will be the highest. And for the first half of 2022, our PBT already reached 8 million. This is our uh, summary of balance sheet figures. Now. So we have uh, 
healthy asset and we have a healthy cash balance with net cash positions. Our total borrowing is only about 10 million. For the turnover days, uh, our cash conversion inventory turnover days all quite uh, stable. You can see our debtors turnover. We manage our cash flow very prudently. Our turnover days always we try to keep it within a month, which is 30 days. And for 2021, we all notice an increase from 20 days to 42 days. This is expected because uh, of the uh, launching of this Kuku and Pure Mattress for rental, whereby for this, our collection will be spread over three years instead of like our previously normal is within a year, a month, I think. It's spread over three years. So this increase in the turnover days is expected and calculated within our uh, launching of these products. So we expect the for the initial one to two years, it will take up some of our working capitals, but subsequent to that, the cash inflow will be very, very strong. This is our dividend payout and uh, payout ratio. So we have uh, we started paying dividends from 2016. It has been on the right uptrend, and until 2018, then we stagnant 2.5 cents because of the uh, tough economic environment, but we still maintain the absolute payout. Uh, which means that the dividend payout, we have a minimum payout of 30%. But over the past three years, because of uh, our, our profit was affected, so actually we, our payout is higher than our minimum. So for this year, we expect to, uh, it's time for us to increase the, the payout, uh, the absolute terms, huh? but we have not decided on that. Some investment highlights. Okay, we are the largest natural latex manufacturer. Natural latex, uh, just for your information, there are many types of mattress. You all probably have heard. We have spring mattress, pocket spring mattress, uh, four mattress, memory four mattress, natural latex mattress among all. Natural latex is the most premium in terms of the process as well as the cost. So for natural latex mattress is definitely uh, for the premium market. So if we are not fighting for those, uh, those a few, a couple of hundreds kind of, kind of level, it's a very premium because the product is one of the, the provide the best support for the back support. And if first thing is green, second thing is provide very good support. So, and it's something you know, involve uh, quite a bit of uh, technology and know-how. Not many people can produce. Compared to spring, almost anyone can easily produce a spring mattress, but uh, for natural latex, there's, in the whole world, it's only uh, a limited producer can produce this. Number two, we have a portfolio of well-established brands that we are, I would say, we are gaining market share now for the, over the past few years, whereby uh, we, we ourselves, we constantly monitor the market, including our peers. And uh, there are not many players that we have continued to grow the market, especially the domestic market. Number three, our collaboration with Kuku, uh, although we have not met our initial target to achieve, actually our last year target was about 14,000 pieces. We managed to hit about 7,000. For this year, initial target was about 20 over 1,000, but I think we can hit about 12 to 14, uh, which is also more than double of last year. The, the market also got affected due to our local inflation, although not as high as uh, Europe or US, but the purchasing power of the mass market sometimes also got affected. So we, at this moment, we have not seen significant growth as our original plan, but we are maintaining the momentum now. Number four, we remain a very, in a very strong net cash positions and uh, we, we will be giving a sustainable, we always continue to have very sustainable dividends. And our operations, we don't foresee to have any major capbacks in the one, next one, two years. Okay, that's the end of my presentation. Uh, over to you, Cassidy. Thank you. Thank you, Dato, for your presentation. Uh, now we'll begin the session, uh, the Q&A session. So if any one of you have any questions, please feel free to unmute and ask your question. Uh, we have the first question from Alex. 
Uh, thank you very much, uh, Cassidy and uh, Dato, for the presentation. Uh, I have a, two questions. The one is <clears throat> the preference for natural rubber. Do you see that being eroded by the uh, by foam? Um, you know that are uh, non latex uh, mattresses. I mean, uh, what is the shift in terms of uh, customer preferences? You know, are, are they moving away from that? Uh, given the fact that you know that they are, uh, you don't have this, you know, aniline issues uh, with the uh, with uh, petrochemicals. That's my first question. My second question is regarding your rental, uh, mattress rental business. How many percent do you think uh, do you have currently, and what is your target to achieve that? And uh, the kind of interest that you are charging currently on the customers. Okay, for the first question, you talk about moving away. It's, it's still moving away we are gaining from form because form, it commands a bigger market because form is cheap. Uh, has for the law of uh, economics, the cheaper the products, the, the market is bigger. And uh, just now you highlighted the point of uh, aniline. First thing is that our product is without aniline. I highlighted aniline because for 100% natural latex, we still have certain chemicals inside. But for form, the whole thing is made from chemical. <laughs> you see the difference or not? So the whole thing is made from PO chemical, PO uh, petrol chemicals. Then it's through chemical reaction, then the, the, the chemical react, then it expand into form. It's called PO form. Uh, that's how it can they can sell very cheap. Uh, and the whole thing is chemical, of course. Then you talk about the, the toxicity is I don't know how many times higher. Uh, so so the, don't mix up the two things. Uh. One is uh, natural and natural or in terms of pricing, we are targeting a different niche, as I said. For form, mainly you are fighting on, on price. Uh, on price only. And for latex, we are targeting on branding on the the technology because the latex is difficult to produce. To produce a good quality latex, not everybody can do. Uh, that's one part. So for the whole world, you talk about world, uh, the, in terms of the composition, form is predominantly in terms of volume is because, because as I said, it's cheapest. Uh, it's every, easily available. Then the second question, you talk about rental. Uh, sorry, I don't really get a question. You asked about is the, the, the money rental or what? Sorry. Uh, yeah, the, the, yeah, the, the rental that you're doing, the, the kind of business they are trying to do with Cuckoo, you, uh -huh. you are, you're writing out, I, you know, the kind of uh, financing arrangement where the where you mentioned that uh, instead of the customer buying outright, you know, you're, you're paying installments. Financing, yes, that's right. Uh, this is a business whereby initially we have to finance it. Uh, initially, we have to finance it. That's why when we said uh, we can see our debtors day increase, our you can see for in our 2021 uh, financial reports, our net cash actually dropped a bit. That is expected because we need to finance this. Especially uh, the accounting is like this. Let's say for a rental of three years, the collection per month is, is the same on the fixed sum. For example, for 60 regular for three years. But initial, when we send out the mattress, we incur the cost of the full mattress, uh, the full mattress. So for the first year, we need to finance it, uh, finance it, and uh, second and third years, it will be the net cash income, net cash, net cash will coming in in the second and third years. So for the initial one to two years, we will see our working capital income is increase. So we are when Kuku uh collaborate with us, one of the Criteria also, they need to find some company that is financially strong to, to, to work with them on this part. So we have actually, when we started last year, we actually, we have tied up more than 10 million working capital for this project, more than 10 million. Initially, we target to have even higher if the volume shoot up higher as per our original plan, like first year 20,000, first year 12,000, second year 22,000, then our working capital requirement even will be higher. And we are prepared already, actually. Even if we hire the max, let's say, according to our plan, we hit about 25,000 this year. We calculated we need working capital of 40 million. 40 million. We have, we have uh, made preparation for that. We are ready to, uh, we won't call for right issue. We are ready to get trade financing, which is uh, 
relatively at a quite low cost for short term. We just need to finance it for one to two years. Then subsequently, all the cash flow will come in very, very strongly. So this is a calculated one. But now the sales never pick up as per our original plan. So we don't need to exercise that option to, to get that financing. And uh, we still have a very strong cash flow at this moment. Uh, how much would you be charging <coughs> the customer if they, you know, under this financing? Okay. Uh, uh, when we first started, as I mentioned, uh, so customer, they pay about 150 a month for three years, 150 a month. So our share of 40% is 60 ringgit a month, 60 ringgit. So for the full three years, the maximum we are going to receive is about 2,160, 2,160. For for ease of calculation, normally we only say our share is about two thousand, about two thousand, and the cost of the mattress is approximately about one thousand, about one thousand. So that's why our GP, of course, we have to cover for logistics. So our GP is at least 45 percent. We don't need to cover for all the like our own retail sales. We have to pay for rental, pay for sales commission, salary, marketing, advertisement, all those things. All those things will be covered by Google already. So this one will be more like a net GP will be more or less like on a PBT already. I see. So in terms of non-performing non customers, I mean, they finally they cannot fully pay. It is Coco who, who absorbs the losses, is it? How, how does okay. that work? It's, it will be bad by both. Huh? It's, it's because uh, any collection will be shared. Huh? So non-collection both also bear it. Huh? But this one, uh, the beauty of collaboration with Kuku is that they uh, they have been in this business for, for seven years already. They have the full database portfolio of all the good paymasters. They only target those good paymasters one. Even from their existing uh, customer base, uh, their so-called bad debts uh, is less than 5%. So when we launch this, uh, they only target those good ones. So far, our non-collection it's, I think, just around 2 to 3%. Uh, it's, it's still below our, our initial target of uh, maximum 5%. Uh, so the collection has been uh, very, very okay. Very good. Mm. Okay. That, that's wonderful, Dato, to hear. Uh, there's one final question. Maybe I just could just slip in. I think that's probably quite important uh, to many mm. of us. It's regarding the supply of latex. I mean, uh, we know Malaysia's the rubber trees are all uh, dwindling, of course. And I'm sure you're getting from Thailand, maybe in Vietnam. But uh, even those markets and those and those uh, under supply, um, you know, coming off as well, and you know, and going back to my earlier question, uh, is there a way to substitute the the natural rubber with other kind of uh, materials, uh, other different kind of foam under PVC type of uh, materials, you know, that can be offer a cheaper alternative to customers, which eventually would be competitive. No, this is that's why the, the business direction. We are from uh we used to be a producer of PU form. Uh, we used to be a producer of PU form. PU form is something uh I would say generally low technology, very cheap, and uh yeah, difficult to differentiate yourself from others. Uh, so we are moving away from that. So we are not concerned about uh the supply. Your concern is about the supply of uh natural latex. Uh, uh there are very there are a lot of new plantations actually coming out in Thailand, Vietnam, and Sri Lanka. So in terms of supply, it's not really an issue. And natural latex demand will always be there. The biggest demand for natural latex actually is comes from the automotive industry, the tire. The tire, although they some they mix with certain synthetic latex. They still need to have certain percentage of natural latex because of the durability, the elasticity, which cannot be matched by synthetic latex. So the forever the demand will be there. And our consumption compared to the client is very, very small. So we, we don't see there's any risk of uh, shortage or I say totally out. Uh, so it's our intention to move into this green uh, natural latex to differentiate ourselves from others. Okay, great. Thanks very much, Dato. That's all for me. Yeah, welcome. Uh, Dato, I have a question from a, a listener. Uh, he wants to know a little bit on what are the alternatives if there's a payment default from customers uh, from your rental business model? Alternative, okay. The payment normally like this. So every month, they will auto-debit the customer's account. So in case certain months, they 
they cannot auto debit, they will approach the customers, they have their sales team, service team ready, which is their advantage as well, their platform. So very often we have a few cases where by one, one, two months, they cannot, but third month onwards they resume. So that's okay. Just like sometimes the HP installment, you drag for one, two months after that, they continue, then it's okay. For extreme situation, we have also, of course, there are situation that customer totally stop because few cases that we have customer and uh, sadly that they pass away due to disease or COVID or whatever, all those, of course, then we, we, we write off the whole thing, even the matches we dispose of. So far, totally those like uh, very bad, that's what I would say is very, very minimum, uh, very, very minimum. So we will collect back the mattress. Uh. Hmm. Okay, thank you, Tato. Yeah. I have another question. Um, what is your current market share and how do you compete with other premium players like uh, Keta, for example? Uh, okay, this question, I can only estimate uh, because we don't have a very formal uh, statistics to commit. We, we just, because ourselves, we, we did our own estimation of market. We did a ROC search on all the players in the market. Uh. So our, our turnover total is about 100 million. As far as I know, we, we search uh, the, the data. They are still over, I think it's around 40 million. 40 to 50 million, I think, yeah. So but I don't know how how detailed is that, but that's what I gathered. Uh. And their operation also, I think they are actually rather small in terms of size. Okay, thank you, Dato. Uh, do we have any more questions from the floor? Okay, uh, Cassidy, I have a question here. Hey, Dato Eric. Yes. Uh, Jack here. Yes, Jack. Uh, uh, I, I want to ask you, uh, this uh, the Kuko mattress, uh, mm. because now it's brand new, uh, everyone is getting a brand new mattress uh, because it just launched uh, recently. So let's say after the four, five years, uh, uh, the, the mattress, I, I don't know how, 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 you, how will you handle the existing mattress? Would that be, would that be disposed of uh, or, or would that be recycled? And then the, and going forward, uh, what's the perception for people uh, getting, now is people getting a new one? I think going forward, people are maybe getting the second, second, third usage after you clean up the mattress. Would that affect the sales growth going forward? Okay, the this rental model, let's say at the end of the third year, let's say the, the, the three-year period one, at the end of the third year, the ownership is actually is passed over to the to the uh buyer already. Uh, so it's passed over to the buyer. So, but uh, the after sales service, because at this moment, the, the money rental comes with uh, every four months, there's a, uh, how to say, in-house uh, cleaning of the mattress. But after the end of the rental period, then the audit stop already, then the customer have to take care of themselves. Oh, okay. So after three years, the, 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 Will be transferred to the buyer. Mm. Oh, okay, okay. Because I worry just <laughs> if it's existing one, but because uh, the cancellation before three years now is low, right? Oh, very low. Yeah. Very oh, low. Okay. All right, all right. Very, very low. Yeah. Okay, maybe the next question, uh, Mr. Ku. Uh, hi, Dato. I'm Ku from uh, CJCMB. So I yeah. just have a, a few questions. I mean, we are coming into the end of third quarter. So yeah, I just want to get a sense of how, how the sales slides uh, in the third quarter compared to previous quarters and, and how, how do you think about that? And I mean, this is in terms of domestic and export as well. And just like I mentioned, this is my first question. The second question is, uh, you mentioned that your export is badly affected this year. And yes. how about going to the second half of this year where the USD is strengthening? Or how, how, how is it like for the export sales and also... The freight rates has been, uh, I think it has been declining as well. So do you see a stronger demand coming back from the export market? Mm -hmm. This is my second question. And the third question is uh, regarding any increases in uh, price heights and what, what's the quantums like if you have any price height towards the end of the third quarter? And is that able to offset any uh, raw material uh, prices, uh, elevated raw material prices costs? Or have you seen the raw material prices declining uh, going forward? Yeah, so all my questions. Okay, for Q3, uh, we are in the midst of finalizing the Q3. Uh, but I'll say this, uh, year on year, we will dis 
uh, we have very strong growth uh, year on year because mainly the Q3 last year was affected also. But we our our domestic sales continue to be very strong. Our export sales, I would say, sadly, continue to be weak. Uh, we have seen no no uh, strong sign of coming back as yet. Uh, and we don't see by the end of the year it can rebound so soon. So export sales for this year will be, I would say, pretty bad. Uh, you won't, we won't expect to have a very good rebound. We are only hopeful probably after next year, second quarter. Let's see how, like, how the, those advanced countries like US, Europe, how they fare with their hyperinflation situation. At uh, this moment, that really strongly, seriously affected their the demand. Uh, as far as I know, their gas bill increased by five to 10 times. Uh, my friends from there, they say the gas bill per month used to be 500 pounds, now it's 4,000 pounds, all those things. The situation is out of control a bit in certain of the European or US countries whereby it's, it affected their confidence. So I, the one I, I don't know when the government, their government can solve the, the issue. So my answer to that is that we don't see it to rebound in the next quarter, next one to two quarters, not so soon. Even though the, the good news is the freight cost is coming down, which is good. So when the demand comes back, then we believe that the rebound will be very strong. But I don't foresee it to be so soon in the next one to two quarters. The third question they asked about the changes in price of those things. Actually, we are in a rather good position. Uh, always we are able to pass on the price up to our uh, customers, especially for even for the locals one. Uh, and sometimes we didn't do it because the changes in raw materials is up and down. Like uh, in Q1 and Q2, the, a lot of raw material price showed up a lot. We have increased our price from the beginning of the year. Q1 and Q2, the raw material price showed up a lot. And in Q3, the raw material price came down a lot also. So it's, it's like shut up and come down, all those things. So sometimes we, for those short-term fluctuations, we just uh, maintain the price. So we don't go in like every month or every quarter, keep on changing the price, unless we find that it's absolutely necessary when the uptrend is rather permanent. For short-term month, because we have certain hedging in process, hedging techniques to average out our, our cost price so that we don't need to keep on changing the selling price which is very troublesome for us and for our customers also. Yeah. Okay, understand. Thank you. Uh, means uh, the domestic is very strong. Is it able to uh, more than offset the slower demand from export uh, market? Uh, yes, I would say yes. Correct. Okay. So domestic, great. based on our, because uh, our situation is that we are quite unique per se in the local bidding market. A lot of uh, certain brands, you know, I don't mention the brands, uh, big brands, whatever. They are, we are in a very unique relationship with them. They are, we are competitors. Uh, when it comes to uh, retail mattress, we are competitors. And they are our customer because they buy latex form from us. But for their premium models, they need latex, they buy latex form from us. And we have this mattress factory outlets. We sell multi brands. We also carry some of their brands. So our relationship is competitors plus customer plus suppliers. So we are on good terms. Uh, sometimes we are on the healthy competition of these things. They always call me sometimes. They say, wow, oh, their sales are got affected very badly. Whereby I look at my sales, say, we are increasing. So sometimes that means, probably that means we are gaining market. Okay, understood. Means you mean, that's why you also mentioned the third quarter uh, raw material price uh, dropped a lot. So could we safely assume that there's an improvement in the margins? Uh, yes. All right, thanks. Thanks. That's all from me. Thank you, Dato. Do we have any more questions? Uh, hi, hi, Dato. This is Ellen from Kananga. Hi. I want to ask, okay, so for your um, cuckoo, uh, collaboration uh, and compared to your own in-house uh, selling mattress, how's the margin compared? Because that Google one, you absorb all, but uh, but you say it flow directly to bottom line as you don't need to pay the rental. Just want to see the how's the comparison between these two? Okay, for this comparison, then we have to look at the 
just the GP alone as well as the overall. Uh. For our own sales, uh, let's say for our own direct retail sales, our margin is definitely higher than the Kupu Nepio because we need to cater for advertisement costs, marketing costs, rental costs, salesman, salary, commission, blah, 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 all those things. And for the Kuku the Pure One, all those part is handled by Kuku. So we are accepting a lower margin, but that lower margin, which basically we can say that it's, it's uh, close to a PBT already because except our own admin, general admin now, other costs is all borne by uh, Kuku side already. So you talk about the GP, our direct retail, of course, GP is higher. But when it comes to uh, PBT contribution, then uh, I would say it's also difficult to compare because they involve, when it comes to PBT, involve how you allocate the general admin costs between the two divisions. Uh, for us, nobody, previously, we already have our existing one. So we, we charge all our general admin to our existing one. The Kuku Nepio, we treat as extra one. So all the admin costs that uh, factory, office, director, whatever the main cost we don't charge over. So it depends on how you allocate the cost. Mm. Mm, I see, got it, got it. So I also noticed a lot of other players previously from foam, uh, spring foam, they start to adventure into uh, latex more. So is it a threat to you or how do you see it? Because like Dunlop, Pillow, all this, all started to have more latex. Okay. Actually, Dunlop Below is the one well, of the pioneer in latex. They are not starting there. They are the pioneer in this. But sadly to say, they started, I think, early 19, 1920 or something. But sadly is that they are, I would say that now Dunlop Below, they have lost their technology in terms of latex production. So now Dunlop Below, that you see in the market, they don't produce their own latex. They are buying from others. Uh, they are buying from others. So uh, that, that's the situation. Uh. So quite sadly, they are one of the, the pioneers in latex, but uh, due to management last time from US, U Europe or whatever, some problem surface, they, they've stopped all the, uh, they've lost the technology in terms of latex production. Uh. So. So now they are not, they are buying from others uh, for the products. I see. So other brands that like, um, like other brands that changing towards natural latex one, do you see it as a threat also? Uh, yeah. Then you have to tell me which brand that I can tell you uh, from my knowledge. Uh, that you mentioned down below, I can explain to you their situation. Probably which brand you talk about them, probably I can share with you my understanding. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, like the so there are a lot of brands they have the so-called latex series or whatever. Actually, they are buying from others. Some probably buying from us. <laughs> uh, so so it depends on which brand you talk about and uh, uh how whether they have the technology to produce that. Uh, probably they just buy from others, then they launch a series mm. of latex products. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Do we have any more questions? If not, we'll call the session to an end. Yep, I think we'll call the session to an end. So thank you very much for everyone joining us today. Uh, thank you, Dato, for your time. Uh, as usual, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us and we'll try to answer your questions. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Cassidy, for organizing this. Thank you, Dato. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye.